In the world of sports, Africa's women champions, uh, the Nigeria Super Falcons, have played down any threat from hosts of the Women's African Cup of Nations, Cameroon, when they, both sides face off in the Saturday's final. A Saturday's final will be the ninth time both sides will be meeting at the international level. And the girls are eager to make it nine victories. Nigeria defeated the Lionesses of uh, Cameroon 2-0 to lift their seventh Africa Women's Championship title in Namibia. Well, the head of the UN Commission of Human Rights in South Sudan says ethnic cleansing is going on in parts of the country. Chairperson of the United Nations Commission on Human Rights in South Sudan, Yasmin Suka, said at the end of a 10-day visit that starvation, gang rape and burning of villages are still being used in the country. Members of the UN Commission on Human Rights in South Sudan have called on the international community to do more to prevent South Sudan from spiraling into catastrophe. The team of three commissioners has just concluded a 10-day visit to the country in which its members toured different regions such as increase in hate speech, a crackdown on the media and civil society, and deepening divisions in the country. All producing South Sudan won independence from Sudan in 2011 but in December 2013 slid into a two-year civil war after a dispute between President Salva Akir and his former deputy Rik Mashar. A peace deal signed in 2015 has failed to stick and sporadic fighting between rival soldiers has continued, leaving many of the nation's 11 million struggling to find enough to eat. The commission, which was set up early this year, is charged with looking into gang rape destruction of villages and attacks on civilians that may constitute war crimes. The Commission reiterated what the UN Special Advisor on the Prevention of Genocide, Adama Ding, told the Security Council last month that he'd seen all the signs that ethnic hatred and targeting of civilians could evolve into genocide if something is not done now to stop it. In the meantime, the World Food Program has warned that malnutrition is above the 15% emergency level in 7 out of 10 states as famine looms, leaving at least 4 million people severely food insecure. Many people fleeing, fighting, left their crops to rot in the fields. Join us uh, to talk more on this issue is the VOA's uh, Jill Craig. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Right. There are so many stories of the atrocities going on in South Sudan, but could you give us a clearer picture of what's going on in that country? Yes, a uh, clear picture, if I think anybody has at this point, to be honest. Um, as you said before, you know, there was a three-member UN Commission on Human Rights group that just got back from a 10-day fact-finding trip to the country, and uh, the commissioner said that ethnic cleansing is taking part in some areas where the stage is set for a repeat of the Rwandan genocide that, as we all know, occurred in 1994. And those are quite strong words. Um, coming from the head of the UN Commission on Human Rights in South Sudan. Um, she further mentioned that, that people are being displaced through starvation, through burning of villages, and through rape, which are all being used as weapons of war. So currently it is quite a grim situation in South Sudan. Is there, what's the sense, you know, of security there? What are the people feeling? Uh, do they feel safe at some, in some areas and maybe uh, and violence going on in some other areas? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, in the earlier days of the conflict, there were certain pockets of the country that were considered relatively safe uh, compared to their neighbors. At this point, those places are becoming few and far between. And I'm sure that many of us, uh, including your listeners, remember the latest onset of violence that occurred in July of this year um, when there were attacks at, um, at a private hotel compound as well as in and around the IDP camps in Juba. So even Juba uh, in July was not considered safe. Now, I think in Juba now um, it's, it's become a little bit better, but um, it's also getting a bit tenuous um, with some other threats that are coming down the pipe um, in terms of what could be happening in the coming days and weeks.
The president has said that, or has, has denied reports of ethnic cleansing in South Sudan. From what you've seen and reports that you've heard, do you think this is true? Uh, sorry, I have trouble hearing you. Are, are, is the question, am I seeing, do I believe that there's ethnic cleansing? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Um, yes, I actually will. Um, I, I haven't um, been to South Sudan in recent days, so my reporting is based on what I'm hearing from analysts and from people who are there. Um, I would say that people are very hesitant to use the term ethnic cleansing, especially in the academic and NGO community, unless it is warranted. And in you know earlier this year, people were especially hesitant, and I'm seeing more and more now that people are saying ethnic cleansing um, could be taking place, is taking place. Um, as a way to really sort of um, indicate the significance of and the severity of what's happening um, and, you know, to, to, to sort of ward off what could happen if, if action is not taken now. What's the way forward for South Sudan? Do you uh, think that this violence will continue uh, knowing that the situation in that country is tense as it is? Another excellent question. Um, you know, the UN Commissioner for the uh, Commission on Human Rights said that when she and her team were traveling throughout South Sudan, she was very disturbed to hear villagers say that they're willing to shed blood to get their land back and that they believe that they're beyond a uh, point of no return, which, which is rather concerning in and of itself. It's also important to note that um, some of the recommendations that the UN and others have put forward, including the United States, um, include having you know the 4,000 additional peacekeepers being deployed to South Sudan. That was a very heavily debated discussion topic, and as we know, Kenya actually um, pulled its troops out um, after a, a disagreement with the UN about its force commander um, leading the, the, the UNAMIS during the July incident in, in Juba. Um, but anyway, but the UN has said that 4,000 additional peacekeeping troops are needed. They should be deployed. And additionally, I think more countries, including the U.S., are urging for the arms embargo, which has not happened. Some analysts believe it's too little too late at this point, where others believe, well, you know, we've got to start, we've got to start now and do something. So I think your question of um, what's going to happen in the future is a good one, and I honestly, I don't believe anybody truly knows the answer to that. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on the situation in South Sudan. That's uh, the VOA's uh, Jill Craig uh, talking there. Right now, Mabel Simpson is a designer and entrepreneur based in Ghana's capital, Accra. She's hoping the December 7 votes will choose a candidate that can tackle corruption, create jobs and mend the economy. She believes a change is what the country needs. Ghana is headed to a tight general election on December 7, and some of the main issues are unemployment, corruption and a struggling economy. President John Mahama is bidding for a second and final four-year term in office under a National Democratic Congress ticket. He has made proposals to boost industry, energy, infrastructure, health and education. His main opponent, Nana Akufo Addo, and his new patriotic party blame Mahama for squandering the wealth the country has amassed since it began producing oil in 2010 and being out of touch with the people. Akufo Addo has vowed if his party wins power to give every constituency the equivalent of $1 million a year to alleviate poverty by installing basic services such as electricity, running water and sanitation. Mahama said the plan would lead to incoherent development. Ghana needs a leader who is going to fight corruption, who is going to bring jobs especially for the young people, it's just not going to be he saying it, but then he acting it also. They would keep the promises they made to Ghanaians so that people would be proud of Ghana. Mabel Simpson is an accessories designer and entrepreneur working people. in Accra. She started her business in 2010 with the equivalent of 50 US dollars in capital. Well, that's Network Africa. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jocelyn Rogers.